Real Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm, and it's one of the best ways to support the channel. Without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about Saquon Barkley siding with the Eagles. I am so fired up about this move. Um, this is so exciting. The Eagles always put themselves in a situation to be competitive, to win, to not only win, but to win championships, Super Bowls, to actually get there, not just be relevant. A move like this highlights what the Bills don't do, what um, what the Cowboys don't do, what the Giants don't do, what the Commanders don't do, what all of these other teams that are just kind of good, kind of okay, but never get the job done. The Eagles know what's right. And they do it consistently. It's not to say that they win the Super Bowl every year. It's not to say that they go to the Super Bowl every year. But the three teams that really understand and really get it, and a fourth is pretty much the Rams as well, is the 49ers, the Chiefs, the Eagles, and the Rams. For the last like decade or so, these are the teams that understand how to win, how to get to multiple Super Bowls, okay? They're the ones that truly know what needs to be done, okay? The Rams obviously went out and got Stafford. They would have not won the Super Bowl if it wasn't for also getting Von Miller, OBJ. They know that you need a lot to win, okay? Same thing with the 49ers. They know we need more. They needed to go out and get Christian McCaffrey. They needed to elevate at the QB position. They needed to get a Chase Young, for instance. They knew that they need more, more, more. The Eagles do the same thing as well. They said, look, we got a great team. We need more. We need a better running back. We need a better wide receiver. They went out and got A.J. Brown. Those moves got them to the Super Bowl and were a play away from winning the Super Bowl, just not unlike the 49ers. The Chiefs know, and the Chiefs have the ultimate cheat code, right? They have Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. That alone is just like a massive trump card. So they know what needs to be done. Take now comparison to say the Cowboys. They were okay with who they had. They said, oh, we got CeeDee Lamb, Dak, and uh, Mike McCarthy. That's good enough, right? No, it wasn't. It's not enough. Clearly not enough. The Giants, who knows what the heck they've been doing. Daniel Jones, he's a good enough quarterback, right? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, we got Josh Allen and the Bengals. He's good enough, right? Like, you know, he, he can lead us all to victory. No, you need weapons. You need people. You need players. You know, it's not just enough. So... Again, it's one of those things where the Eagles, the 49ers, the Rams, and the Chiefs know what needs to be done, and it just so happens that they're the most successful teams in the last 10, 15 years. I mean, the only other outlier to that is the Patriots, but that's with Tom Brady, and right, that's a very specific thing, um, but remove Tom Brady from that, you know, and you have a whole different ballgame. So... I'm really interested to see what Nick Wright, and I think I saw Greg Jennings was there too when I was queuing up the clip. I'm curious to see what they have to say. I And I have to imagine it's going to be positive. I would be fascinated to see any negatives they have to say. Um, but let's break it down from here. Welcome back to an exciting show. Breaking news. I'm Saquon excited. I'm fired up. Headed to Philadelphia is three years, just under $38 million. Now, Philly lost DeAndre Swift to the Bears also today. Uh, Greg Jennings joins us. Welcome, Greg. We'll start with Nick, though. Do you like this move for Philadelphia? Uh, <laughs> I don't. And do you, America, do you know why Greg Jennings looks the way he does? And you can kind of tell in the suits, but if you follow him on IG, you can definitely tell. <laughs> you know why? Because Greg Jennings every day walks past delicious restaurants, Mm. Goes to the grocery Very store true. to buy his dried rice and vegetables. <laughs> Nick and Wright doesn't like it. That's how you know it's a and good move. He doesn't pick anything up off the, uh, you know, the checkout stand. Ah, this sticker sounds good. He because he knows what needs to be done yeah. to achieve his goals. Disciplined. Saquon Barkley, is a delicious dessert. Oh my that god. The Eagles don't have the luxury of, but they think they do. I go down the Eagles' list of needs. Highest paid running back in this market's free agency, <laughs> which I told you guys either Philly or Dallas was going to do. And everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, look at this Photoshop of him in an Eagles jersey. Oh, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Saquon Barkley, like scary it. hours. Yeah, but that's not why they lost. They lost because the entire back seven of their defense stinks. So this offseason, you know what they've done? They've added another D lineman for a lot of money and a running back. 
Their running game and their pass rush is good. The back end of their defense is bad. So, no, this is not the team that should have been spending almost $13 million a year on a running back. But it sounds fun and it's exciting. So, no, I don't like it. They overspent. I I'm surprised. Look, I'm happy for Saquon. Mm -hmm. But I'm surprised that he got this much money. DeAndre Swift got eight. $8, 8 million a yeah. year. Um, I thought he'd get a little more than that, maybe nine or ten. Um, look, still, it's 12, 13 million a year. It's not going to break the Eagles. They definitely need to do something not. with that defensive backfield. And they're but going when they to. lost Swift, they need a running back. Saquon, my only concern is his health, but I'm going to try to be optimistic and say, hey, Christian McCaffrey had health concerns at one point. So if he stays healthy, he is a better back than they've had, even as productive as their running backs have been the last few years. He's better. I think it's a fine move. It's it's still it's a lot for a running it's back. It's a great it's move. Not Craig Jennings, please overall. speak some sense so to I, these I'm people. Fine with it. Okay. Uh yeah, I like it. I like it. You got to do something. And I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Defensively, we know where their woes were on that team. But if you're going to compete in this NFC against teams like, well, it's not a bunch of teams, but teams like uh, Dallas, San, Francisco San Francisco 49ers and Dallas Cowboys, you got to have weapons. And your weapons have to show up. This, this kind of Exactly. Please tell me why people thought the 49ers were so good. Okay, Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, he's the only reason why, not the only reason, one of the biggest reasons why Brock Purdy didn't get any flowers because of Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey didn't fumble that ball in the Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl. It was all started and stopped with Christian McCaffrey. You're getting a lot of that with Saquon Barkley. So to act like getting that is not a big deal, because they also said that it was a big deal for the 49ers to overpay for Christian McCaffrey. Does anyone see that as an overpayment? I don't think so. Does anyone think that the 49ers would be the 49ers if Christian McCaffrey wasn't there? I don't think so. So it's such a nonsense take to say that this isn't a good move or that, you know, he's a dessert. Like Nick Ray is just such a clown with that take. I honestly, I, I, I shouldn't say I'm surprised, but it, to a degree I am. Like I, I would have, at least he would have, I thought that he would have maybe say that he doesn't like it, but here are the positives to it or whatever. But it's obviously a great move. They didn't have to overpay. They didn't have to reset this market. And now it's, you know, backing them in a corner. Just because they're not building their defense yet doesn't mean that they're not going to, okay? Harry Roseman's one of the best GMs in the in the, in the the league, in the history of the NFL, dare I say. So this idea that they're not going to do also continue to do what needs to be done is just comical. Kind of tells me they feel like Jalen Hurts needed a little bit more help. And he oh, did. We, we, have to, we have to find someone that we know can give us a little bit more. I'm not saying that DeAndre Swift couldn't, but he's not Saquon Barkley. He doesn't garner the attention that Saquon Barkley. When you look at the 49ers, what do we, we see? Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. We see Debo. We see, we see all these, yes. these weapons, and I get it. It's a different. But also, why do they do that? Because they've I, always had a limited quarterback. I understand. Dude, what do they well, pay Brock Purdy? They used to. A million eight, eight bucks. I understand. What do they pay Jalen? Uh -huh. Second most of anyone in the I league. I understand that as well. I mean, that, or third they most. They got tons of weapons, they, though. Yes. Now, but, now with Saquon. I, go ahead. I, I, just, I just feel like part of the reason why you do this is to help and assist your quarterback who clearly struggled last year. You can say he was hurt, he was laboring, what have you. But he struggled last he was year. Hurt and had a OC. Took a, he took a draw, a step back when we look at what he did the previous year to earn himself that contract. So I think this helps him as well. Do you think there's any chance that Howie Roseman did this deal because he thought Jerry Jones might grab Saquon? Well, I, I suppose that's possible. But I, Howie Roseman, I think, you know, he has maybe too much of an affinity for drafting Georgia players. But aside from that, he's had a long track record of success. Mm -hmm. If I see my divisional competition is going to make a mistake, I want to let him make the mistake. I just don't know how much evidence folks need that the big, shiny running back acquisition is not going to get you over the top. The one exception might be Christian San McCaffrey. Francisco, but C-Mac Yes, he dealt with injury issues. Saquon's been healthy one year of his career. Well, fully, and, yeah. And, and full all the way through. Yeah, and 16, Christian McCaffrey, I think we all agree, is a better back than Saquon is. Yeah. Now, maybe coming out of school, we, it wasn't that universal. Right. But what he's done in the NFL, I just, I, I understand 
the, the arguments everyone's making. And yes, this should, when Saquon's healthy, make their offense better. And it'll be nice to see Saquon on a team, see what he can look like when defenses can't just yes. focus on yes. him. Correct. I'm excited yes. to see all that. But if you're Philadelphia, you, you can't have one of the top three most expensive quarterbacks, A.J. Brown, super expensive. They're going to have to pay Devontae Smith. They, yeah. they, 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 they hired an offensive-minded head coach to do all these things. Now you also need the, uh, the running back. You also need the expensive running back. Then something's wrong. Oh, you got San Francisco. You know, you know, what are you really do? quick, you know what he's doing about? Right. Like this is this is a head coach that is on the offensive side of the ball that understands. I got to do something. I got to right. make sure and ensure that my side of the ball, if nothing else, delivers. Yeah. Okay. That's, I wanted to get to some Danny Dime. Well, it's don't. Have, this isn't Sirianni's move because Harry Roseman runs that show. So this was how he's saying, this is what I want, this is what I need. He's got a pristine track record, okay? So this idea that they should be questioning him in this regard is abs- is just kind of comical from my viewpoint. So, again, the Eagles have been consistently competitive for years. Second most playoff wins to the Patriots in the last, like, 20-some years, okay? The Eagles know what they're doing. They won a Super Bowl in 2017, and then a few years later, with a completely new head coach, a completely different quarterback, and pretty much a whole completely new different cast of characters outside of a few players, went to the Super Bowl again and almost won. That is incredible. We do not see that. We do not see that. Did the Patriots get to another Super Bowl when they got rid of Tom Brady? They did not. They did not. The 49ers kind of did it with a different quarterback, but they still had a lot of the same players, and they still had the main head coach, Shanahan, okay? What the Eagles did was pretty remarkable from 2017 all the way to 2023, so or 2022, whenever it was officially. So this idea, again, that Christian McCaffrey, or that um, Saquon Barkley is just dessert, right? He's just the cherry on top, or that it proves that Jalen Hurts needs all this help and support Okay, are we saying is Jalen Hurts as good as as Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady? No, but did Tom Brady need the help when they made sure that they got Gronk again and Antonio Brown? Did he need the help? Uh, No, Tom Brady was like, yo, if you want to win a Super Bowl, I need weapons. That's what they did. Um, same thing when they went out and got Randy Moss with the, with the Patriots. Was he like, I just need someone. I'm just not good enough. You know, Tom Brady is just not good enough. No, they just knew that everything is better when you have an elite wide receiver. Everything is easier when you have a great elite running back and wide receivers. And that's the thing. The Eagles run game had been struggling for years, really. You know, so much of it was was dependent a lot on, say, um, a Jalen Hurts. This now relieves that burden of not having to rely on Jalen to run as much. And now it's just another threat that the defense has to respond to and now opens getting a true threat like a Jalen like a um Saquon Barkley now if you're on the defense you have to know where Devontae Smith is AJ Brown is Saquon and a spy on Lamar on on Lamar Jackson on Jalen Hurts that's a lot of things to juggle that is an overwhelming prospect for a defense that matters significantly adding one player is like a force multiplier Saquon Barkley is a massive force multiplier that we only ever got to see left on an island with the New York Giants with Daniel Jones okay this is a huge acquisition not unlike why Christian McCaffrey was able to shoot to the moon when he had when the team teams have to say we have to focus on Depot we have to focus on Ayuk we have to focus on Kittle you know, like, oh my God, and Brock Purdy can throw the ball and Garoppolo can throw the ball. Like, what do we do here? It opened up the door and led to Christian McCaffrey being an MVP candidate and probably should have won the MVP, quite honestly. You know, Lamar Jackson obviously balled out, but, you know, was playing out of his mind. The Eagles can do the exact same thing. And I predict that they will because they have, they're building that 49ers offense. They have A.J. Brown. They have Devontae Smith. They have, um, oh God, the tight end's name is completely slipping my mind because that also opens a door for him. Got Dallas Goddard, like all of those things open up. Yes, you have to build the defense to act like they're just not going to do anything on defense is comical. This isn't just the done. This isn't just done. They didn't blow $30 million, you know, a year on Saquon. And now they just have no more money to spend. They understand offense, offense, 
offense and they know that they'll be able to build their defense um so this is a great move i'm so excited to it and you know what the fact that nick wright doesn't like it actually just makes it all the better but what do you guys all think please let me know in the comments below i read every single comment so if you agree with me or disagree with me let me know i want to hear it all um do you think this is a great move for the eagles do you think this is a great move for saquon you know let me know um, also, please don't forget to subscribe. As I said, we are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really, really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.